suppose if by magic, let's move on to stress hormones. So what we have here is a picture of the endocrine system. So our endocrine system is our glandular system. Uh, and there's a little uh, there's a little extra in there. There's what we call the hypothalamus, which is actually uh, the central nervous system, and it's all you know present in the brain. And the hypothalamus receives the information from our senses. So this is hot. There's a bus coming towards me. Um, I can hear someone screaming. I can smell fire. That kind of thing. Uh, and and it will make decisions um, based on the information that it's getting. It then has a lot of conversations with the pituitary gland, which is a gland. And, you know, the rest of our endocrine system runs um, through chemical messages. That is actually what the endocrine system is. It's a message uh, center, like a mail room, but it's using uh, chemicals to send the messages. So that's what our hormones are, is these chemical messengers. So our pituitary gland and our hypothalamus are receiving messages from the body, in the case of the hypothalamus from our senses, and then the, they decide what to do about it. So the pituitary gland will receive the messages like, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I need a wee, I need to go to sleep. All of these messages, and those messages are coming from these other glands, which I'm gonna talk you through. And then the pituitary will decide, what do we need to do about it? So the pineal gland is responsible for us uh, responding to light and dark. So our wake hormone and our sleep hormone. We have our thyroid gland, which is here, and this is responsible for metabolism. It's responsible for heat and cold regulation. We have our thymus, and this is very connected to our immune system. We have our pancreas. Now, it's interesting about, uh, you know, we mention it in the endocrine system because of insulin. So our blood sugars are rising quick, must make insulin. However, the pancreas's job, like 95% of the pancreas's job is supposed to be digestion, not working on insulin. So it should be doing this huge job with digestion. It breaks down our fats and it, uh, you know, converts, it gets the vitamin D out of our food. It's not doing that. It's working on this insulin imbalance. So uh, it's quite interesting when you start to look at it from a bigger picture. Then we have our adrenal glands and our adrenal glands live on top of our kidneys. And these are, we're gonna talk about them later on, but these are in, from, from this perspective, very uh, key in making our cortisol, our adrenaline, but we're gonna talk about them later because in menopause, once our ovaries, which I'm about to come on to, stop making our sex hormones, it's our adrenal glands that take over this kind of like this switch. Um, that's like the main source of making our sex hormones post -menopause, menopausally and post -menopausally. Um, So the adrenal glands uh, get very, very busy. You can imagine in response to that four pages of stresses that we were talking about earlier. So then we have the testes and the ovaries that make the sex hormones. And these are all supposed to have this lovely conversation with the pituitary gland with the hypothalamus are supposed to talk to each other like a family but kind of like you know if you're in a house with you know one person gets a cold you're pretty much all going to get that cold like if one of these glands starts to struggle everybody's going to start to struggle because like one person's not doing their job right that's kind of what happens in the endocrine system and as soon as we have an endocrine system that's not functioning how it should, we end up with these very common symptoms of endocrine imbalance. We're tired or we're exhausted or wired and racy or, you know, tired and wired. Sugar cravings, so common. Inflammation happening in the body. So joint problems, that kind of thing. Digestive problems are, you know, endocrine imbalances. Constantly getting colds and bugs, having difficulty sleeping, headaches weight gain or weight loss and hot or I'm cold I've got low sex drive or I've got irregular periods or period issues of some kind these are all endocrine symptoms so let's just talk a little bit about why so we have something called the HPA axis which translate as translates as the hypothalamus pituitary and adrenal axis or conversation that's basically what this is so what's supposed to happen is the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary sense that there is uh, some level of stress or danger in the body. 
And they send a memo to the adrenals that says, hey, adrenals, please, could you make some cortisol? We, you know, we've just had some food we're intolerant to. We need to get away from danger. They kind of don't realize the dangers inside of us at this point if it's food intolerance. The adrenals go, yeah, no worries, guys. I made the cortisol turn off, turn off the request. Except the problem is that's that little red line. That's the, hey, no problem, guys. Switch off the request. I've done it. The problem is, is that they were asking in relation to something that happened 20 minutes ago and now something else has happened. So we've had another email, had another coffee. The kids are screaming at each other. Uh, we've got to go into work or, you know, something's happened. And now I need more cortisol, more cortisol, more cortisol, more cortisol. Um, what happens is this feedback loop, this red line, gets switched off. So we call this an HPA axis dysregulation. And all that's happening now is the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary are telling the adrenals to keep making cortisol, keep making cortisol. And so we end up in this kind of cortisol soup. So this would be in response to any of those stressors that we were talking about earlier. So you can see that it's all getting quite busy. So if my adrenals are kind of taking up this much attention, how much attention do we really think the thyroid can get? How much attention can my immune system get? everything just starts to kind of get into a bit of a pickle. Now, this becomes really important because we have two sides to our nervous system. We have got the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our wind down, relax, make digestive enzymes so that I can digest my food. Uh, get jiggy with it. Uh, we start to, you know, we have all of this in our parasympathetic nervous system. And it's really important that we have this wind down process. But if I've got too much cortisol in my body, the body thinks it's under attack and it needs to stay in the other side of the nervous system, which is the sympathetic dominant. So sympathetic nervous system. Now that is get up and go. I'm going to run away from danger. I'm absolutely like, I'm not going to be digesting right now because I need to run away from saber tooth tigers. And so when we end up sympathetic nervous system dominant, we're not digesting, we're starting to just shut down, you know, the use of a lot of our, um, uh, all of these kind of functions and the body starts to be in a, this massive stress response. 